Hi, Bob and Angela. Bob, it's so nice to see you. And Angela, I hope you're feeling better. Can you guys hear me okay? I am in side of the Church of Saint Clotilde over in the seventh, and it looked like I had a signal here, so I thought I'd start in here. Because, of course, wouldn't it be a Sunday walk video if it wasn't raining on me today? Hi, Catherine. I swear, it always rains. Hey, Sharon, it always rains just as I'm about to start live. But this is such a beautiful church and it's quiet. There's like nobody in here. <clears throat> and there is. Hi, Terry. Yes, of course, another. It wasn't raining until about 3.30, just as I walked out the door. But it gives me a chance to come inside first. And so we are here in Saint Clotilde. And this is a really beautiful church um, that dates back to 1846. And it is actually a basilic. So it's a basilica. And there's five basilicas in... Hi, Leila. There's five basilicas in Paris. One that everybody thinks is a basilica actually is not. And another one is actually... Some say it's been actually dropped down. Hey, rocks down from a basilica. I'll tell you which ones those are. But this is a church. Um, originally, a church that was here was dedicated to St. Valerie. And St. Valerie um, was a saint that St. Denis was not the only one that picked up his head and walked off. St. Uh, Valerie was also a saint that took her head and went for a little walk. And so Saint Valerie was in the third century. She's known as Saint Valerie of Limoges. And there she is right there. But she was uh, her father, her father and her mother. Her mother was a royalty and her father was a um, governor and they were married. And then she, they wanted their daughter Valerie to marry this, this gentleman who was a pagan. He was not Christian. And so she refused. And because she refused, he was basically like sentenced her to death. So her head was chopped off and she picked it up and she walked from uh, to the town of Saint Etienne to Saint Maritel. And that's Saint Maritel there. And so she walked there. And once she got there, she arrived with her head. And then he basically blessed her and said, you, could, you, you can now peacefully die with our blessing. So do you know that there's actually 18 saints of France that are martyred because they picked up their head? And many of times they walk by a lake or some sort of body of water to rinse off their head. Nice stories, huh? But this little uh, chapel right here is dedicated to Saint Valerie. And then you also have the Stations of the Cross that go around the church. And these are all done by James Pradier and James Pradier was a sculptor that also did some of these statues that's over in the Place de la Concorde. But we'll whisk around the back here. And I think we tried to do this one time with um, Kate many years ago, but it didn't work. So it was pretty, it's today doing it at four o'clock instead of five like I used to. I think it's a sweet spot as far as when there's not mass and things going on in the churches. But these rose windows are gorgeous. And these were all done by Emil Thibault. And the, I'll show you the, some of the saints, uh, stained glass of the saints on the way out, which are really cool. My shoes are really noisy in here. <laughs> Here's my girl, Jeanne d'Arc. And the front of this church, if you have not been by here, look at this ironwork in this church. Um, there's somebody that's associated with ironwork of another church I'll tell you about today, too. Look at these windows. This is Saint-Rémy. Saint-Rémy was the uh, 
was the bishop of Reims. And so when Clovis went to Reims and was baptized into the church, it was Saint Remy, and that's actually what you see depicted in those windows. This is Saint Clotilde. Saint Clotilde was the wife of Clovis, the king of the Franks. And it was this church originally was going to be known as the Church of Saint Charles after Charles X, who was not a saint, but you know, when you're a king, you just say you are. And then later it was changed over to Saint Clotilde, which was on the 14th century anniversary of the baptism of Clovis. And then the Chapel of the Holy Virgin. And these paintings on the wall. This church is actually really great because they also have these plaques in here that tell you what's in the window, who did the paintings, everything. I wish more churches did this. Some do. San Piece has hit maybe half of them. Um, and then this is the Holy Cross. Would you see some of the pieces of the depictions of the Passion? And then this one is kind of dark, but of one of my more recent obsessions, Saint Louis, because I did an episode on the podcast of The Crown of Thorns, and I've done two pretty extensive, extensive writings about it in the newsletter. But that right there, these were done by William Bougereau. And um, two weeks ago, when we did the Walk in Montparnasse, I showed you where William Bougereau lived. I love it when these all link up. But that window right there is Saint Louis when he brought back the Crown of Thorns, and he's walking them through Paris. And then they went to Notre Dame. And these are Saint Louis too. That's the education of Saint Louis at the very bottom. And then you have him there always, many times with his cloak of fleur de lis. But today I went into Saint Chapelle this morning, early, and uh, went in there because the whole, the last set of windows. It's all about Saint Louis and the Crown of Thorns and how they found them and brought them back. So this this chapel here is Saint, uh, Saint Clotilde. I look at this one. Hi hey, Notre Dame. Part of it's broken. So this is dedicated to Saint Clotilde. I always feel like I have like this little kinship to her because it used to be in spell check, like in word, it always wanted to change my name from Claudine to Clotilde, which is so random because it's like really Clotilde is like that even more common. I don't think so. But there she is marrying Clovis in the year 492. And that's when he was baptized. He had, a, he was at a battle and he had actually said if he survives this battle, he'll convert to Christianity. Okay, this is a gorgeous church. Okay, I'll show you some of the windows and then we'll head outside. I'm pretty happy the signal's so good in here. But look at these. So these are all stained glass windows of saints and they're written in Latin. And they are gorgeous. And of course this one here, the next one, has my other girl in it. There on the right, Saint Jean-Vier, and on the left is Saint Germain. I mean, perfect. But the other, so the other basilicas, and the difference between a cathedral and a basilica, a basilica is basically um, because a significant event happened there or and the Pope actually deemed it to be. So the first basilica that was given the title in 1805 is, of course, Notre Dame. This is the baptismal. So you have Clotilde. Francois Xavier. And these are really beautiful holy water fonts. 
very sweet. But the first one, of course, is Notre Dame. The second one would be Clotilde, 1898. It was given the distinction. Then there's the Notre Dame de Victoire, 1927. That's over in the second. And a church actually, I don't, haven't even ever been to. It was the Notre Dame um, de Petiosur. That one was done in 1966. And the fifth one is Sacre Coeur, 1919. But they actually say that it was, it's actually kind of fallen down from being a basilica, not for any specific reason. But the other one that most people call the basilica, uh, Saint Denis, the Basilique Saint Denis, it's actually not. So outside here, it's actually warm today. It's in the 60s, but yesterday we got up to 79 degrees, but so cloudy, but at least not muggy. So here we have Clotilde on the outside. Oh, good, and stop raining. Clotilde and Clovis on this one. But we'll go back into this little garden over here so you could see the full extent of this amazing church. And this one's gonna be about some blossoms too. And these little purple leaves in here, and I'm not so great when it comes to things like trees, <clears throat> but I did look it up. And it is the Judas tree because they say it could be the type of tree that Judas hung himself. So I came in here yesterday and, oh, I just, walked into a bunch of tiny bugs, came in here yesterday and I was sitting in here and there was like a duck. And I swear to God, this duck was actually a dog and it was begging. <laughs> I'll post, I didn't post the little video, but luckily I found a granola bar in my bag. It didn't have any chocolate or anything in it. And I gave it a little piece and then, but it kept like pecking at the bottom of my shoe to get me to give him some more. It was the funniest thing. And then a little tiny, like two-year-old kid came and was chasing after the poor duck and he was quacking and running away. Okay, but here's, so here is the front of the church. Isn't this gorgeous? It's Neo-Gothic and it was one of the very first churches in France with the Neo-Gothic style. And so this little square here is the Square Samuel Rousseau. And Samuel Rousseau was a composer. He studied under César Franck, which is that guy right over there, which I'll show you a little closer. Um, but he was a composer. And he also performed at saint Clotilde. And then you have this little sculpture here. This is the maternal education. This is this building on the other side of it. They just painted not that long ago those blue windows and doors. It looks so great. But this was in 1875 by Eugène de la Planche. There's all these little tiny bugs and they keep trying to go up my nose. Look at that. It's such a beautiful church and you can really see it from quite a ways away in Paris. I don't want this lady to think I'm stalking her. <laughs> um, and then this one, so this is the one, the monument to César Franck. The cute little pansies. Looks like that piece where the hand is. It's so wide, it must have been dis, uh, replaced recently. But this one was in 1891 by Alfred Lenoir. But this is a really quiet little area. It's also Sunday. But even yesterday morning when I came here, there was nobody here. Oh, oh 4.15. But those little, those trees have like the prettiest blue little um, buds on it. And that's a tree that you see, there's a ton of those in the Tuileries. But the back of this church is really gorgeous. It has the huge um, buttresses. And there's a great little restaurant back here called Basilique that you, um, that's really fantastic. And we're not very far from the Rodin Museum, just down the ways a little bit. And if I remember correctly, on this street here is where 
Madame de Séjour lived, and she was the woman. There is a bust of her in the Jardin de Luxembourg, and she is the one that um, started when she was in her 50s writing stories for her grandchildren, and she ended up having those published, and she became the uh, first woman to ever actually make money um, off of her writings and be able to, to basically live on them. She, it was in the beginning of the 19th century because her parents, her family is actually from Russia and her father was the governor of the town that set fire to it um, in Moscow and near Moscow to keep Napoleon from going there. If you saw the movie, they changed it a little. They had burned it before. The truth is they burned it before he got there and in the movie. They, changed, they did it so he's there and he wakes up in the middle of the night and it's on fire. But she moved to France with her family. And then her husband um, was the one that created what is now known as the relay that you, you know, if you go to on the train or the airports here, you all over Europe, there's like 2,000 locations, um, to, you know, to buy newspapers or expensive bottles of water. So this little street, this is really cute. This is, I just walked down this one yesterday because when I came here, I came down the other street and I walked down this one and I was like, oh my God, the doors and everything are so great. So this here, number 22, look at that beautiful, very clean. Um, so number 22, um, a gentleman named Raymond uh, Soube, which there's actually a plaque there. He lived here and, um, what I loved about his story is that he was an ironwork artist and he died in 1970. So actually very contemporary times. Um, this is a uh, Rue Les Cases, C-A-S-E-S, L-E-L-E-S-C-A-S-E-S. -E 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 and he, um, he, usually when I see somebody is going to say that died in 1970, basically if anybody died like after 1944, I kind of don't care. <laughs> I am historian and they needed to die, you know, around World War II. And even that's pushing it. But I just really love all the really old, old history, of course, of Paris. But Raymond, who lived here, he was a soldier and um, a um, historian. Oh, no, that's uh, the cause. I'm getting them all messed up. But Raymond was a ironwork artist and he actually created some of the doors when you go into um, saint germain des prés those huge doors that go into that are iron and glass. He did those. And guess what else he did? He did the telescoping, which don't telescope anymore, the lights on the um, Pont de Carousel that go towards the Louvre. He did those too. I just love it when all the little stories, when then I learned where somebody lived, but the street um, de Caz is named for the Marquise Emmanuel de Le Caz, and he lived from 1766 to 1842. He was a historian, and he went with Napoleon. There's a lot of Napoleon stories around here, Napoleon Bonaparte and the third. And he went to St. Helena with him. Um, and he had already gone to, he had already been with him for the 100 days. He went to Waterloo, then he went to St. Helena until the emperor's death and wrote his story. Look at this one. This one's beautiful too. I just love to uh, go down the other little streets, but it's just as quiet today as it was. This is a really great, beautiful door too. Look at that one with all the different uh, marble in it. And you can see kind of back to the towers of Clotilde. And this white one here that we just passed, that was the Austra it was part of the Australian embassy. They had in there, there's 32 um, apartments, 32 rooms, and um, they sold in 2021. And this one here is another, it's another Napoleon reference, but Napoleon III. So this was General uh, Le Mercier. He lived here. He was actually against Napoleon III, and it was here that he was arrested. Poor guy. But look at this beautiful one over here. So this is another one of those little stories that I just love because this, look at how beautiful this is. Gorgeous. So here at number 14 was Bernard Boutte de Marvel. And he lived here and he lived from 1881 to 1949. Again, 
another really late one. But he lived here. He was a artist, but he um, died. The reason he died in 1949 is because he died on the same plane that Marcel uh, Sidon, who was the lover of the worst woman in history. You know who she is. If you know, you could put it in the comments because you know I won't say her name. But she, the he died. This was the boxer, the married boxer that she was having the affair with. It was kind of the love of her life. And so Bernard was on that plane. But in World War One, he served in World War One. In World War Two, he was a little older, so he decided he was going to work as a bouquinist. But we're not even to the part that I love. So he worked as a bouquinist, but he was also an artist. And so. Just the other day, I'm doing research about him, and I see this painting, and I think, I know I've seen this painting. Where did I see this painting? So yesterday I was at the Orsay. I'm going through all my photos, and I'm like, nope, I don't think it was the Orsay, even though that's when it was it was painted during the time it could be at the Orsay. Kept looking. Thursday, maybe it was Friday, I went to Christie's because they have a t- two days of Impressionist and Modern Art uh auctions coming up on Tuesday and Wednesday. And they had some amazing things, including a painting by Suzanne Valadon and a bunch of other stuff. Oh, wait, this gate's open. Um, And uh, so I was there. (laughs) That's right, Terry, you know it. Um, I was there. Look at the Westy area. Um, And I saw this painting. And I was like, wait a second. So I finally found it in all my pictures. And the guy that lived here painted this painting. It's called The Park, and it's going to be in the Christie's auction, and it's valued at ten to 15,000 euros. I just love it. I love it when it all connects together. Look at these little, but there's, look at, oh, I didn't want, the guy was getting off his bike. I didn't want to freak him out. But look at the uh, wisteria. It's closing. So cute. Hi, Bella. Guys, I'm so glad it's not raining right now. I'm like, I shouldn't jinx. But this one, this was where Joseph uh, de Hosvier lived, and he was the attaché for the poet Chateaubriand. He's not just the steak. You know, you really actually, it's funny. Chateaubriand is one of those things. You don't really see it here on menus, but you see it in the steak. And I was thinking my friend Jenny, who will be here, this week because that was her she always used to love to order that anytime we'd go out to dinner if they had Chateau Brion on the menu and maybe we just love to say it but there's also so down also on the street is a museum I've never heard of and I tried to look it up and see what it was about and I still couldn't hey these are different I've never seen one ow oh I don't want to mess this up look at they're not little ladies that I usually love, but they're like little, uh, it's probably these people and I'm trying to mess around with her. But here on the right is a museum. It's called the Mu- Social Museum. Can't really figure out what it's about. Here it is. Look at, then you have, you know, a new, newer buildings and then the wood bricks. And this street in front of us is the Rue de Belle shop. And we're just going to go on it for one quick little block. But this is a really beautiful building. Down to the right of the street, like a stop here at the corner. If you look towards the right, this is where um, the headquarters of Yves Saint Laurent is. Down there. How beautiful that building is. On the top of this one. Yeah. Oh, I thought that was two C's on the top of that. A D and a G. But look, it looks like it has like a little terrace. Um, hello, can I live there? Hello. Usually all of the restaurants around in this area are pretty quiet on the weekend. But if you went straight ahead, you would go right to the Orsay. And here on the corner, there's a really beautiful little um, flower shop here. And yesterday, there was tons of flowers on the outside. It was really beautiful. So 
Today was the marathon. So I went to Saint Chapelle this morning, but I was glad I stayed on the basically the left bank and didn't cross over to the right because it's on the it's most of it's it takes place on the right bank, except for when they go by. No, I think they stay on the right bank. Look at this. This has been here for probably at least two years. This chalk angel by Jean Charles. And he does these sometimes on these plaques. And I remember this was at least two years ago, if not three years ago, because I saw this and then I looked up the story of who uh, Roque Simon was and then wrote about it. And he had worked for the Ministry of Arms, which is right around the corner. And uh, he fought and to the liberation. And that's where he was uh, sadly killed. So I'm going to cross the street here because... I want to get you a better view of this amazing location we have down here. But this one here where that clock is. I'll lose you guys for a second. We shouldn't. We should have. But I, so there's a building just right down here on the corner that I am obsessed with. And I actually used to think it was much, much older than it is. But it's Neo Renaissance. And it's not that old at all. But, and here, right there, that is um, the Latin American, the Maison. And they do um, some really neat teeny tiny exhibits in there and there's also a restaurant and I looked at the menu I was all excited thinking maybe I'd find some tacos but nope but I have discovered a place I went last Sunday you know for traditional Easter nachos and they have nachos and a margarita and if I had brought my wallet with me I might walk a little farther. Look at how gorgeous this building is. So this building here, 215 Bs. And then just right past it is the part of the building that's connected to it. This is the one that I have been obsessed with for a long time. And it's only, it's not that old. It was in 1881. And it was done by the architects, uh, Putti and Vassero. And look at it. I'm obsessed with it. Including, let me see if I can zoom in here for you for just the mosaic. Look at that. Mosaic Boulevard Saint-Germain. But you know what used to be here? You know what was founded here? Look at how gorgeous it is. Too bad I should have come by here when it was uh, winter so about the trees, um, the leaves on the trees. But it is such a gorgeous building. I look at, I mean, it is very Renaissance. But this is where the Alliance Francaise was created in 1883 by a few guys you might know, Jules Verne, uh, De La Sepp, and Louis Pasteur, De La Sepp ever watched and I don't watch these shows I haven't watched these shows in a decade or more but I remember when it first came out I watched it The Real Housewives of New York and there was the one lady that was Delicep and it's so funny because she was like oh I am you know descended by the Delicep's her husband was but Delicep's actually ended up going to jail for a long time because he was involved in this scandal of the Panama Canal so I always thought it was funny that she was really um, hanging her hat on that one. But then she got divorced. Uh, but look at how gorgeous this building is. It's the College of Engineers now. Look at just that little bump out. Let me get it right here. You see it? Obsessed. And so, and then usually a couple times a year, some guy goes and climbs up in this tree and lives there for like a week. I'm not really sure why. I thought the first time was maybe they were going to tear it down or to, you know, cut the tree down. But um, the tree's still there, so maybe he was successful. I don't know. That store always has really amazing um, 
French posters. Like they're really cool. Um, there are some really amazing ones that were of uh, like the Air France. So I love those. The very like 50s, 1940s, 50s. You know, the very Hausmanian buildings here. So did it go up here to Rudebach? Burger King ads. The master Provencal mozzarella. Hmm. We got little, uh, the place where you see the red awning over there. The Cafe uh, Saint-Germain. I remember going there years ago and they had actually really good French onion soup. And anything I had there was always really good. I went there a couple, like one, once or twice on my first day here. And it was so great. And then the last couple of times I've gone, horrible. Just horrible. Like I got a tuna nissoise and the tuna was like soaked in teriyaki sauce. It was just bizarre. There's actually quite a few places like Le Bonaparte Cafe over in by the Eglise Saint-Germain. Horrible now. Different menu, different people, but it still looks the same. The menu looks totally different, and the menu is different. It used to be their croque madame was great, unlike the piece of poilin bread, the big piece, open face with the cheese on top. Now it's just like the one everybody else has that they basically reheat it. So there's quite a few places. These places, when I say they're not good, just go for coffee <laughs> or for a drink. So some of them, like the Bonaparte, really does have one of the greatest views. Skip de Mago and Flor and go to Bonaparte for wine in the afternoon, on a sunny afternoon, looking at the bell tower of Saint Germain des Prime. So this one, so we're on Rue de Bac. Bac means ferry. So there used to be a ferry before there was a bridge down there. It would go from side to side. And then this building here, number 46, is De Rol, which hopefully a lot of you have been in here. Um, De Rol goes back to 1888, but this building itself goes back to 1697. It was actually two buildings, but the one that was connected to it on the inside has been torn down. And it is just um, a more modern building now, which we can't see anyway. But De Rol is amazing. It is so cool. That's why they do like the taxidermy animals, which is a little weird, but they do really cool ones where they do, you know, it could be a duck with, with the wings of a swan, or sometimes it's like a goat, <laughs> uh, but they have, it's really, really fun. They don't want you to take pictures in there, but if you ask, they will let you, or if you're just, you know, sneaky, which you could be with phones these days. Uh, but there's also that scene in Midnight in Paris, where they filmed in there, but it's really cool. They also have really great gifts. If you have somebody that's a gardener, it's a great place to get some really fun, like little belt, you know, tool belt kind of thing. Um, but here is also next door in number 44 right there. There is actually a plaque on it, um, but that is where Andre Malraux lived. And Andre Malraux was the first to actually have the job of the title of Minister of Culture under De Gaulle, and he, we could thank Malraux for a lot of things in Paris. Um, he was also the guy that was wowed by Jackie Kennedy, of course, who wasn't, and sent the Mona Lisa off to the United States. Look at how up there the, it goes, the terrace goes back because we could see part of the wall here. But this is where he lived until he divorced his wife, first wife. And we're going to head, oh, Advil. I can't take Advil, though. You don't always see the name brand Advil here. The one thing I can't take either is Excedrin. And that was my favorite. When I would have a headache, the best. But I can't have either. Only Tylenol. So here's the Hotel Pont Royal. Hotel Literaire. Oh. 
I've had some clients stay there. And then you have the Jules Rubuchon come here and just come for the potatoes. Because his potatoes, let's see if it's on the menu. His potatoes are just something to die for. Does it have a flat? And it's expensive, it's pretty spendy. But it is the um, potatoes that are like, you know, half cheese, not alley goat, um, but better. And I didn't realize that the, there, I don't think that's an, I don't know if that's actually entrance to the church. So St. Thomas to come. I was going to take you guys in there, but due to time, um, and I think they have a concert. Look at this cute little, um, cute little terrace. This is interesting. Tied to the church. Oh, a little repair shop. I love this building back here, and I could not find anything about it. That's always frustrates me when I can't find something. I have a book that's super detailed into just about every single address you'd want in Saint Germain, but we aren't in Saint Germain. We are in the seventh, and the line is very close to here. So this is the Rue de Gaston Guimard. He died in 1975. Again, another one of these people that lived so late. But you might have heard of the books. So it's a publishing house, started in 1911. And the original one was right here on the street, and it still is. Look it. But this is also a newer building, but pretty fantastic. Oh, guys, I'm so glad it's not raining now. Next weekend, I already put the event up a few weeks ago. Because next weekend, I'm going to do a special one about Notre Dame. It's going to be at a different time. It'll be 5 p.m. Paris. So 8 p.m. West and 11 a.m. East. Because I have an all-day tour that day. And so I'm going to race from out of the city and Chateau to get here. Um, I'm doing some tours all about the Impressionists and it involves going out to the island of Impressionists with my friend Angela that lives out there. We're doing a really cool tour and even eating lunch where Renoir painted the boating party like on the terrace in the exact place which we did a few weeks ago and it was so amazing. But that one is going to be all about Notre Dame and what's going on, where we are. And there, because we're getting up to the five-year anniversary, it is on the news every single day. Look at that. It's a tire made of, like, we had some of those. You know me, Mom? Are you watching? Where are those, like, <gasps> look at those ones. I'm going to turn on to Rue de Vornoy, taking a right, and there is a rock stuck in my shoe, and I could hear a clip every time I step. So straight ahead, you see the Louvre. Thanks, Bob. That street is three different names in within two blocks. <laughs> but this is Rue de Vornoy, and... This was, oh, see, I walk by these all the time, and I love them because my grandma had ones just like this, and we had ones that was all white and one that was painted, and I would honestly go in there and buy that. This rock in my shoe is going to make me crazy. Those things. Exposition, 4 to 9th of April. Hmm. Hi, guys. So, Rue de Vernoy. Rue de Vernoy is named after Henri de Bourbon, the Duke de Vernoy. 
He was a legitimized son of Henri Cat. And Henri Cat had his son with Catherine Henriette de Balzac. And he was born in 1601. And he was legitimized in 1603. Catherine tried to pull a fast one on him and trick him into uh, marrying her, but he married, I don't know if it was a very good choice, Marie de Medici. And, but he still, he didn't, he didn't have her head chopped off. This was in England, but he uh, did agree to legitimize his son. So he lived here, so you could see, uh, we'll come back down here, I'll show you the plaque. Because this was the whole, where I had my whole idea where we were gonna go. And all of the blossoms, they popped out over a week ago. And I saw somebody online say that they weren't, but they were well out over, well over a week, 10 days ago. And they're already pretty f fading. They're fading a lot. So, and we've had wind, so these are all gonna start falling. Aren't they pretty? This sweet little sweet, this sweet, <laughs> this sweet little street is called the Rue Edelon. And it's named after Francois Pierre Alexandre Joseph Allen, that died in 1837, that's more like it. And this is where they used to have, very loud, aren't we, people? This is where they had the Chapel of the Holy Virgin. And this whole area was a lot of the property of Marguerite. So the first wife of Henry IV, which it kind of stinks a little bit, sticks a little bit when you name the street after your legitimized son that you had with another woman. But that's how it worked old, over here in old France. So here you could see. Henri de Bourbon. But there's two things coming up here. One thing a lot of people know about on this street. Another one, another thing that people don't know a lot of about and I love it because it's, of course, tied with one of my favorite people, Monsieur de la Croix. So it's here at this building, number 11. I love this building. And I was walking on the street the other day with my friend Claire coming back from the Orsay. She goes, oh, I love this. I've always loved this building. I'm like, me too. Because I love how it sits off the street and the grill work. And I love the door. But my guy painted a room that was in here. So there was a gentleman that lived here and his name was uh, um, Charles the Comte de Mornay. And he lived here and he actually, uh, St. Mars is the other way because I'm opposite direction of, uh, say, but um, there's another place actually I went the other day for lunch there. I'll tell you about that was amazing. Um, but he lived here and he actually went in 1831 on the exposition to um, North Africa. And another guy went with him, my guy Delacroix, who again was one of the only artists that actually went to the Orient, went to the Middle East, and then came back and was actually able to paint it from the sketches that he did. Most, most artists didn't, just were painting that period from research and books and from what other people had told them. But Delacroix went there. But he did a painting of the room of the Duke here, and it's in the Louvre. And it's really amazing. It kind of reminds me a lot of um, what you see at uh, Malmaison, where they have like the, the, um, the ceiling and everything covered in striped fabric. So there's these little things that have popped up all over the city. There's a new one I just recently saw of Yves Saint Laurent. But I'm not sure who she is, but I keep thinking it's Reba McIntyre. But I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be Reba McIntyre here in Paris. And then, of course, here we have the Maison Gainsbourg. This is a gallery, and they always have these really great old photos. I don't know if you could see in there, but no, can't really see. But on the back wall is Marilyn, and here is Sophia Laurent. So, uh, Lauren. 
I just made it French. But of course we have, see, home and now museum of Serge Jansport, which I still have not come in here. I need to come in here with my special card because it's sold out for months. But this is where he lived at the end of his life. And then it finally opened last October as a museum, finally. After a very, very long time. But I'd always love to come by and just check out the wall because it just constantly changes. This is new. Of the art people add here. There's a lot, there was a lot of stuff after Jane Birkin died that people were adding. Merci, Jane. See, rest in peace, Jane. There she is. But I have not been in there yet. When I come by here, it's usually on my way to the Orsay, and it's early in the morning, and then I have things to do. So I need to kind of try to get back here. Uh -oh. But now we're going to get run over by a car. So I will walk you guys down to the left and then we'll say our edu there. And next week, don't forget to join me from Notre Dame. I don't understand. I really wish <laughs> that this whole what they like to call fashion of wearing like bike shorts and things like that out in public as actual clothes would pass it's not clothes and you could call it athleisure you give it whatever kind of name you like it's not appropriate to wear if you're not in the gym and here you, they never would wear that if they were not actually in the form of exercise. Paul Belmondo lived there. Thank you, Leslie. Yeah, I, um, the problem is, is that when I'm doing these and I'm doing research, like the, that street, La Caz, I never been on that street before, and um, I uh, was doing the research on the street, and then I find these stories of all these people, and then I want to go down the rabbit hole, and then I also want to, then I also make a bunch of other notes because then maybe I'll try. To, oh, look, it's this here. This is the golden goose, but it looks like. They're remaking these shoes that already look old, older. Oh, yeah. oh, it's like, oh, I better tell my friend Brandy about that that's coming in September. Because if you need to get your shoes fixed, you could do it there. But I find some stories in the, in the process of researching the walk that I then want to learn more about and then even maybe turn into the podcast but what's also great is because of these walks and the research and then I just it all sticks in my memory that when you're coming to Paris if you want a tour I could pretty much do a tour of just about every single area of the city at this point so um, one tour I do a lot is the day people arrive and so I can meet you at your hotel or your Airbnb and then give you a tour of your neighborhood, show you the history and the things around it, as well as really great restaurants, you know, where the pharmacy is, the grocery store is. Um, and that is one that I do a lot. And so if you are coming, make sure you send me an email if you want to do a tour of the city. This month is very, very, very busy. And there's a few, t few tours and things. Um, I might be actually pulling back from, not doing as much. 
just because for me, I like to keep them fresh and new and fun for me and the, and the research. But I thought I'd bring you down here to show you the sun. It's gone down a tiny bit, but it is, it is definitely higher than it was a month ago. Thank you, Angela. Yes, make sure you hit the like button and share it and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Um, this is a good sign of this boat going down the river, but the only boats they've really been letting go are these bateau mouches that are rather short. But it is pretty high. It got up to what, four and a half meters, which is higher than it was um, a month ago. But it is definitely going down a little bit. But we're supposed to have more rain tonight. And I think tomorrow. So it'll go up again a little bit. But I think it's supposed to start getting dry. But it's always, it's always rather exciting to see it. But yeah, yesterday you could only barely see the top of those um, benches on the far side. So it's getting better. And of course, right there, my love. And right there, in the center of your picture, that's where the Mona Lisa is. So tomorrow on the, on the podcast is an episode we did about um, some more stuff about Notre Dame. So I'm going to do a monthly one about Notre Dame. And tomorrow's is going to be about a few things in Notre Dame, including something that we really didn't even know they had until the fire, which was the carpet, the amazing carpet. And then also um, about the doors and the Pieta and the vow of Louis the 13th. So that's in tomorrow's episode. If you listened last week, um, that was the episode part five of the Mona Lisa. And I had some wonderful clients on Friday. And we were walking around Saint Germain and she had listened to them. And so she had more questions about it. And she's like, I've listened to all of them. And so I love hearing that, that they listened to all the Mona Lisa ones because I'm not the only one that may be obsessed with it. But I will quickly scroll through here and see. Hi, June. Fashion Nada. I love that. Oh, the um, restaurant I went to is just pretty much right across from St. Mars, uh, Angela. And it was this Vietnamese restaurant. I went with my friend Mark um, that owns Willie's. And we went there for his birthday lunch with a bunch of us. And it was incredible. It has been um, this Vietnamese restaurant. And it was the chef, Robert. It was originally his father's. And it opened almost 60 years ago. And it was incredible. We were the only ones there. He just basically just he's, you know, also, he knows Mark restaurant business and it was amazing. And we had two wines. Um, we had a Bordeaux from 1990 and a Bordeaux from 1959. And it was amazing, but it was a really fantastic restaurant. Um, and so much fun. All right, guys. Um, I will go ahead and sign off, but thank you so much. If you want to send a tip at all, you can send it to PayPal, um, or, um, Venmo at Claudine at ClaudineHemingway.com and I'll probably use that to buy wine. Tomorrow I have to go on my fourth day of my horrific French civic training that you have to do when you are, your visa is the one that's the path to citizenship. But let me tell you, it is mind numbingly boring horrible. But tomorrow's the fourth day. And then I think maybe I have to go to another one that they called just to ask you what you thought of it, which I'm sure nobody goes in there and says how great it is. But I'm glad I'm on my last day, but it's all the way in the 19th. So it's not fun. All right, guys, thank you so much. And I will see you next week. Remember, it's going to be an hour later than normal um, from Notre Dame though. All right, guys, thank you so much, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend.